hello again. I am here with Mr. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, star of Watchmen, plays the comedian. Yay! Now, the comedian. <laughs> Dark. Not so dark, funny. Not a very bordering funny. on social, definitely not even bordering on just sociopathic it's, kind yeah. of character. How hard was it to sort of wrap your head around that kind of guy? I mean, oddly enough, it wasn't hard at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you, I, look, I had this great, amazing graphic novel in front of me, mm. in which uh, you know, I think people. Sometimes I've been asked today if it was constricting having to you know, have this thing you kind of had to kind of march to this certain drummer, so to speak. Uh, uh, yeah, like it's a little like a confining, but it wasn't at all. And, and it was such kind of a basis to draw from. Um, it, any question I ever had about character or reference or anything else, I had this... It's not the best source material you can ask for, isn't it? You, you, you couldn't ask for more. What Alan Moore did and what Dave Gibbons drew, um, you know, for all of us... Uh, and then, you know, put that with, uh, you know, uh, the costume and stick a cigar in my mouth. And um, I was just plain pissed off by the end of it all and uh, was ready to go. Uh, it was, it was, uh, scarily, it was easier than uh, I would have ever anticipated to kind of get into that character. That would be. Uh, I'm not even sure with that. I don't even know easy. really where to go with that. <laughs> how, do you, how did you decompress from being that guy all day? On, on set, did it was it was you know I don't I usually well Jan, I had a couple of days on this that actually weren't <clears throat> that weren't easy uh, that I did take home with me and and uh, uh, two scenes in particular uh, that was just it was just hard to do I mean uh, I'll talk about one uh, the attempted rape and and just the the continuous beating on Carla's face uh, I mean. And here's this brilliant actress, gorgeous, who's egging me on, by the way, as an act, you know, come on, Jeff, you know, don't be a pussy, <laughs> basically. I mean, I couldn't believe it. You know, take 200 and, I'm, you know, she's flying across a pool table. And it was all, you know, done to a certain extent with knowing that it's a movie, but, um, you know, there's this moment that I walk behind where Zach was, I was talking about something. I think I was talking about the hooded justice thing that, that hadn't been in the script. And I was like, it's got to be there. And, and, you know, when that comedian kind of eggs him on a little bit, um, I'm like, you, you, you've got to need to have that in there. And he was like, well, and he showed me a bit of the playback, and it was just this brutal face shot of the, that I throw at, at Carla. And I was like, fuck, it just screwed up everything. It screwed up. I went home that night, and I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm gonna, uh, I'm screwing up everything I've worked so hard for. Everyone's going to hate me. That you know, this guy's just too brutal. Mm. That was too much. And you know, and, and I had read the book fifty times already, and I knew it was going to be there. But the whole other thing, seeing that panel on that that page jump to life and turn into this, you know, three minute scene, it was pretty intense. Of beating the living crap out of this woman. I mean, it's just how do you make it? Uh, how do you justify that? Mm. And that was really the hardest. That week was a really just, it was a shitty week for me. I, and uh, I, I questioned a lot of things. Um, you know, I, ultimately it was still the best decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> but um, it was hard and I never thought anything would ever affect me like that as an actor because I, you know, I'm not this big method guy. I take what I do very seriously, but that, that really did. It kind of got on my skin a little bit. What's the other side of the coin? Where did you have the most fun? For me, the most fun was uh, falling out that window, um, the wire work. <clears throat> I love the fight stuff too, but the wire work uh, and getting, uh, I had to do all this training, uh, you know, getting on a wire and just being used to it. And mm -hmm. Apparently people don't take to it, and, and I just thought it was like, it was like the coolest ride at Disneyland ever. <laughs> you know, you do this free fall for eight stories and then you're kind of bungeed a little bit and then you bounce a little bit. But we, we finally, we shot this, and I didn't even realize it at the time. <clears throat> we shot it our last, it was my last day of filming. And I realized it's because if I died, they, then we could just bring somebody <laughs> else in. Because I did it myself. And, and, but Zach, this is all I can remember from it, because I, I, he's like, Jeff, can we do one without you laughing? Because <laughs> I'm falling, and just like, I mean, I got a big sit, because it was just, it was just, it was cool. It was just such a rush, and I couldn't get enough of it. Um, so that for me was was uh, was the most fun. Uh, just uh, on a, and the other the other real kind of cool 
a Watchman moment was, uh, and you kind of, you know, the, the whole scale of everything kind of came together, was the Keen Riots and walking onto the set that night and <laughs> seeing New York on fire and, and 500 extras scattering and, and uh, fucking Archie floating <laughs> above me. Um, to leap off out. It was so, yeah, it was so completely surreal and and uh, it's it's when it's the moment for me that it, that it, I realized what Watchmen was and I you know I'd now read the book I can't even tell you how many times and and been shooting for probably two months but that moment and it was so cold and 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 it, it was like snowing and Zach's like snow looks like fucking ash it's perfect because everything's on fire <laughs> um and I just remember this had this moment of like, oh my God, we're doing this. You know, we're, we're making Watchmen. This is insane. What have we gotten? Us? And it was so cool, though. It was just, uh, it all kind of, that was the moment. And I'll never forget it. And my dad was there. I remember looking over at my dad, just going, fuck, fuck, my life's changing. This is it. You know, it was cool. Now, I've read somewhere that you actually managed to set yourself on fire on the set. <laughs> I did, I did uh, during the Vietnam sequence when I just fry that guy. <coughs> um, I'm spraying him, and Zach's like, "All right, that was cool, but um, you need to keep you need to keep the flame on him longer." And I'm like, you know, this is a stunt guy with it's got the it looks like hair gel on him, and I'm 15 feet from him, as close as you are, spraying him down. And oh, Zach's so that, like, that wasn't a compass strip. You were actually oh no, I was spraying. Right oh night. yeah, and wow. Zach's like, you got to do this for like a count, do a, a head count in your head, 10, 10 seconds or something. And that's an exceedingly long time when you've got a flame on a guy. And and I was like, fuck. And I would always pull up after like four seconds. I was like, this is too much. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this fucking guy. I don't want, you know I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I'm not that much into character today. See, there's a headline. Jim. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's exactly that right. And believe me, it crossed my mind. And uh, and so I kept having to fucking redo it. And not only that, I had to have that fucking grin on my face. <laughs> um, and I was really getting kind of because I did it so many times because Zach was always like, it needs to be more. And finally, I got this thing on I'm in my head. I'm one thousand two, and I'm die motherfucker. I'm just like fucking burn, 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 and I'm doing it. And I, I finally pull it up, and uh, all of a sudden, I looked down. And I'd done it so many times that the the the, the gun is just it's spurting gasoline. It's this gel sort of gasoline, and then the rice paddy had been covered. Uh, the water was had a layer of this shit on it from me doing it so many times. And I watched as the flame just starts coming at me and no one's near me. I'm in the middle of this fucking rice paddy, you know, <laughs> and there's not a soul within 50 yards of me. I'm just standing alone and I'm watching the flame come at me and I look down and I see this gel all up my leg. And I'm like, fuck, there's nowhere to go here. And all I kept thinking about is this costume costs like $100,000. <laughs> if I go in the water, they're gonna hate me. <laughs> It'd be better if I just burn. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, I caught on fire, and it goes up my leg, and it's coming up my back. And I remember looking around, and, and the, everyone's eyes were popping out of their heads. I could see Zach, and he's just like, I mean, you could just see this look of terror. And finally, somebody came from you know behind me and uh, and patted it all out, and it was okay, and it was a great story, and and we were all mad because this whole movie we had B camera film. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always another camera shooting stuff. The one time it didn't was, was that moment because it was hilarious. I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody would do anything. They were just like, is this part of the movie? You know, what's going on here? But, yeah, I caught on fire. Wonderful. What's, what's the one redeeming thing about the comedian? If there was one thing he could name, what saves him from being just an absolute... Well, I think there's a, co I think there's a couple things. Um, uh, you know, uh, we can go to the, the love story. That, uh, I mean, I, I'm, in my heart of hearts, I really believe that that uh, Eddie Blake was really in love with, uh, you know, Silk Spectre. Uh, uh, he just had a communication problem. <laughs> he only had a Hallmark card for those moments, you know. Um, he, but he, he, I think uh, in, in the relationship he has with, uh, with Silk Spectre and, and as well as Silk Spectre too, uh, you, you see that... Uh, at least I hope uh, that's conveyed that he knows he fucked up. You know, he, he knows 
he knows who his family is, and he, he screwed up, and he's an incredibly, he's paying the price by being alone, and, and I think that's kind of this incredibly sad thing about the comedian is, uh, you know, what may have been a, a conscious decision on his part early on is his biggest hindrance now, and he's paying the price. And, you know, in the opening scene of the movie, you see he's living in this high-rise, and, uh, you know, you pay attention, and there's like a Hustler magazine on the table, and, and uh, he's completely alone. He's just a sad, fucking, angry old man. He's got this picture of, of Silk Spectre up on his wall, and a, uh, a, a picture of, uh, you know, Mullen, and, uh, and a little one in the frame, and these are all things you can catch when you, you pay, and, and it just, it's, it, it speaks volumes, just uh, if, if you pay attention. And, and, and for me, it was, uh, it was this guy that just really fucked up, and and, and it really did come when he what he when he sees what uh, when he figures out what what Ozymandias is doing. Um, as much as he didn't give a shit about a lot, uh, it turns out that he's not this complete nihilistic person that we thought maybe he was. I mean, he's still pretty fucked up, mind yeah. you. I'm not making excuses <laughs> for that at all. But I think there is a human quality to him that uh, that we try to show, and he's incredibly. You know he's he screwed up, and I think he kind of knows it. I think at the end, you know, that scene with Moloch, uh, I think I think says speaks volumes of of who Eddie Blake is, and and I think he realizes not only is it it's too late for a lot of reasons, and it's really too late for him, and he knows it. You know, he knows he knows he's gonna die. He knows he knows it the minute the door gets kicked in that that's it for him. I don't know. I, don't know. I wish we had more time together, but we're gonna have to. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling there are so many good stories you could tell. There, there, there's probably are, man. It's, it, we had a good time. Right. We had a good time. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Anytime. Really. Pleasure. And thank you, guys. We'll catch you next time. Oh, okay, that's that. Ah. <laughs> Not too soon. Ah! Jeez, man. Thanks, man. Enjoy the